happy days. Harry and Christopher stood on the stage and looked at their teacher. Get on with it, Amanda Pratt said. Harry shouted his lines, I'm probably old. I steal from the rich and give it to the poor. Give me your money. Christopher, who was playing the rich merchant, pointed at Harry's head. Please, Mrs. Pratt, Harry is wearing my hat. He is Robin Hood and Robin Hood always wore a green hat and Harry is wearing my red hat. The teacher looked at Christopher who was wearing a green hat. It was very confusing. It doesn't matter Christopher, just say your lines. Christopher stood and stared at her. She knew nothing about Robin Hood. But Robin Hood always wore a green hat. Everyone knows that. Oh, very well then. Harry, give Christopher his red hat and you put on the green one. But Harry said, this isn't Christopher's red hat, this is David's red hat. So, which hat is David wearing? Harry spoke to her as if to a small child. David doesn't need a hat. He plays Friar Tuck. Friar Tuck doesn't wear a hat. At that moment, the hat came into the hall. Ah, Mrs. Pratt, how's the school play going? Shall we be ready on the tonight? Only three days to go. Hmm. With these children, she thought, we'll never be ready. Not in three days, three months or three centuries. Yes, headmaster, she replied. Crossing her fingers, we shall be ready on the night. All right, children, let's start again. The children all left the stage except for Christopher, the rich merchant about to be robbed by Robin Hood. Christopher shuffled across the stage, making a noise like a railway engine going up a hill. Choo, 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 choo. Amanda hoped that the headmaster would not notice. Harry, alias Robin Hood, jumped out and spoke his line, I'm Robin Hood, I steal from the rich and give to the poor. Give me your money. The headmaster coughed. Hmm, excuse me, Mrs. Pratt, but why is Robin Hood wearing a red hat? He asked. Everyone knows that Robin Hood always wore green. He came up and whispered in his ear. These small details are important, Amanda. Back in the teacher's room, Amanda sat down, a cup of coffee in her shaking hand. Hi, Amanda. How's the play going? It's very kind of you to ask, Julie, but let's talk about something else. Sorry, what's the problem? The problem, Julie, is called Christopher Price and Harry Jones and David Clausen and all the rest of the little. Yes, school would be wonderful without children, wouldn't it? The two women stayed silent for a moment. What a wonderful idea! A school with only teachers in it. The next afternoon, Amanda was again in the hall. Christopher shuffled across the stage. Choo, 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 choo. Christopher, why are you making that ridiculous noise? You are supposed to be riding through Sherwood Forest on a horse. Christopher stared at her. I know that, he said indignantly, but I don't know how to make a noise like a horse. So I'm making a noise like a train instead. He shook his head. Teachers understood nothing. What was the point of teachers anyway? School would be fine if there weren't any teachers. What a wonderful idea. A school with only children in it. Thank you for attending this session. Do share and subscribe to this channel for more lessons like this. Check out other video lessons by clicking on the video.